Students, parents, teachers, and organizers rallied at Renaissance High School in the Bronx on Monday to protest a military recruitment and job fair event hosted by U.S. Congress members Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Adriano Espaillat. Advocates accused AOC of backtracking on her anti-war campaign promises and policies opposing military recruitment practices that primarily target black, brown, and Latino low-income students, Democracy Now! reports. The rally took place on the 20th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Iraq. AOC has denied hosting a military recruitment event and said it was a student services fair. Politics is so crazy because people can just, like, wake up and make up whatever they want to say about you. And it'll be totally false. And people will just believe it, right? They'll just believe it. So today... Someone made a made up a rumor that I, me, was hosting a military recruitment fair for high schoolers. Now, like, does that sound like something I would do? Like, no shade to anybody, but just me. Does that sound like something I would do? No? Then basic due diligence would mean ask a follow-up question, right? Like, just because someone is like said something on Twitter and posted a screenshot, like ask the, the, the next step is not, I'm just going to believe that and share it. The next step is let me ask a follow-up question. In 2020, Ocasio-Cortez proposed a ban on U.S. military recruitment on the Twitch platform. Joining us now to discuss this is host of the Savvy Saps podcast, Sabrina Salvati. Welcome. Good morning. So great to have you with us. So is there truth to the idea that uh, she was hosting a military recruitment fair? She's complaining. She's saying everybody's getting it wrong. But I'm seeing plenty of reporting that says military recruitment was one of the options at this kind of career day event. What say you? It was one of the options at the career day event. Um, I've actually spoken to the protesters who were at this event. I know some of those protesters uh, personally. Uh, so basically, there were military academies that were present at this event, and they were the headliners for the event. There were other organizations there as well, but you had organizations such as the United States uh, Air Force Academy, the Naval Academy. All four branches there were represented, and for AOC to pretend like they weren't really a part of this or they weren't a significant part of this event uh, is really disingenuous uh, on, on her point. Uh, also, in that response vid, what she also mentions is that there were protesters who were outsiders that didn't even live there. That's actually incorrect. Uh, the protesters were from the Bronx and they were from Queens. And Queens is the, the area that Adriano represents. So the protesters are people who live there in that area. She also went on to say in that video that in order to get into an academy like West Point, you need to receive a nomination from a congressman or a congresswoman uh, slash politician. That's actually incorrect. Uh, I actually know multiple people that have attended West Point. I'm from a military family. I'm very familiar with how these military academies work. And what she leaves out is the fact that a lot of people attend West Point because they have a nomination from their ROTC unit from high school. You do not need uh, a nomination from a congressperson in order to attend West Point. That was just an excuse for her to, to, to explain why she needed to be there. I also want to add to people, it's important that you understand, she goes on to explain that these are academies, they're getting college education. But the idea that when you join these, these military academies is that you are going to go into the military afterwards. When you sign up to join West Point, you are joining the Army. Uh, so AOC is now willing to have this conversation with someone who's very familiar with the process, who knows a lot about the military. She wants to get on Instagram instead, instead of posting that video on Twitter, which is where she received a lot of the criticism. And I also thought it was interesting that she goes on to say in that video that the people who are criticizing her are typically people who come after women and people of color. Hmm. Well, I'm a black woman, so she can miss me with all of that. Uh, this is just an excuse. I think AOC needs to own up to what she did here and stop calling people names, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, this is such an interesting one because, I, I mean, I think the devil's advocate version of this is AOC went because she wanted to participate in this job fair. Job fairs, in my memory of how high school was so many years ago, was that there were often people from military institutions 
at those events as well. And that saying that AOC hosted a military event might be a military recruitment event might be somewhat, you know, kind of hyperbolic, somewhat of an exaggeration, but also one could critique her for, and say something along the lines of, you said you were opposed to these kind of recruitment events. You should have recused yourself from this one if any part of it was associated with a military institution. And, and do you think that's a meaningful difference? Should people would be, would people be on sure footing um, and be less uh, kind of targeted by AOC's pushback here if instead of arguing that she hosted a military recruitment event, simply attended a job fair at which there was also a military recruitment and that perhaps she should not have done so? I think it's the way that the flyer represented the event. It said, join AOC and uh, Adriano uh, at this event. So they were announced as kind of like the host, so to speak. Uh, the protesters did speak to one of the adults that was able to get inside of the event. And they said there was a giant blow up picture of AOC's face. So I think that's why some people were using the phrase that she hosted the event. Now we'll go on to say, um, I'm incredibly disappointed with democracy now. They have actually revised their statement. Apparently AOC's office contacted them and then they made that change. But it's really disappointing because for journalism, you're supposed to reach out to both sides. Uh, I'm curious as to see why didn't Democracy Now interview any of those protesters that were at that event and get their side of the story instead of just changing their statement. So for, it makes me they, wonder. How did they revise the statement from what to what? So the original statement that you just that you guys showed at the very beginning, they actually went back on Twitter and they retweeted the revised statement and said that they were contacted by AOC's office, that this was not uh, a military event. This was just a, a student services event, yada, yada. And there were no military recruiters there. Now, if they would have actually spoken to the protesters, they would know that there actually were military recruiters there. In fact, uh, a former colonel actually was interviewed by one of the protesters, and that's on video. So I was really disappointed with them for not following up with the other side to get the other side of the story and just taking that push from AOC's office and choosing to retract their statement. So I, I see, I, I pulled up the Teen Vogue uh, coverage of this and they similarly have an editor's note at the bottom where they say this story and its headline were updated after publication to include a statement from Representative Ocasio-Cortez's office and note that Ocasio-Cortez co-hosted the event with Representative Espaillat rather than with the military academies themselves. Themselves, so they obviously didn't. I mean, it's, it's possible that Democracy Now! and Teen Vogue or anyone else who wrote about this reached out for comment and didn't hear back and then published the story and then got this response from AOC's office because they, you know, they were getting all this, all this heat. That happens all the time. So it might, it might be that they sought the answer, didn't get it, published anyway. That would be something you know, any of us mm -hmm. would do. So. Yeah. Well, look, here's what uh, anti-war organizer Richie Marino had to say at Monday's rally. A lot of youth here um, are struggling to find jobs. Uh, many youth here are not prepared to go to college, right? Instead of uh, bringing military recruiters here, we should be having a, a jobs fair. We should be having a college fair. Um, Renaissance High School is an arts and theater school. Where are the arts and theater programs represented here, AOC? You're saying this is a student services fair. Where are the services for the youth? Hmm. So, Sabi, I need to understand that there were exclusively, that, that protester seemed to be characterizing it as uh, an event that exclusively was hosting military recruiters, were there not, was it not a broader job fair in addition to West Point and other military affiliated organizations? Based on what I saw from the flyer, the military academies, they were the headliners of the event. There were a couple other organizations like the Department of Education to help students out with the changes to the FAFSA. But other than that, there weren't that many other, I think, um, a city year might have been one of the other organizations, but the, the military service academies, like they were the headliners of the event. Um, I've been to multiple uh, student fairs as well, so I'm very familiar with how it works. But I think the problem that you run into with this event is if AOC would have just owned up to the fact and said, yes, there were military academies at this event, and yes, there were also military recruiters, which he is saying they were not, if she would have just owned up to that, I think people wouldn't be as as furious. Now, some people are still going to be frustrated because it goes against what she said in 2020. 
But I think where AOC went wrong in that response video is she starts to demonize the protesters. She starts to lie about them and say that they were outsiders when they live in the Bronx or they live in Queens, uh, which are both of their uh, representative areas. And I think that is what what is really upsetting people, uh, the statements that she made about them and also saying that these people who are criticizing her typically come after women and people mm. of color. And she leaves out the fact that some of the protesters were both women and, and people of color. So it's just another thing. Like she made it seem like she was being attacked. I know one of the protesters did try to talk to her when she entered the event and when she exited the event and she just ran away from them. Mm. So this is the same person who told people that protests are supposed to disrupt. Uh, I guess she didn't mean that in reference to her. Like, she doesn't even want to talk to them. So if she wants people to ask questions, she's not giving them the opportunity to do so. She's running away instead. Yeah, I, I think that's fair criticism of her for how she handled it and how she framed it. I, for myself personally, the two of you might disagree. That's fine. I don't feel this strongly particularly. I, I guess I, I wouldn't have a problem with a job fair where military recruitment is one of the options among many, but I, I, it does look like that's pretty discordant with what she said on the subject previously, and then how she kind of blamed people for being mad about it and very, oh, you're, you know, you're not covering me fairly, hmm. uh, which is something, which is a well she returns to over and over again these days. Um, Sabrina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll have more rising right after this.